We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute, the radio show discussing the honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Prof back with Christina Rasmussen, Executive Vice President of the Illinois Policy Institute. On this edition of Illinois Rising, you can catch my act with Amy Jacobson as well, on, uh, as you do on this show, on uh, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 9, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah, 9 p.m., that would be a long show. Uh, four-hour morning drive show with Amy Jacobson called Chicago's Morning Answer. And, uh, Christina, uh, one of the issues that Governor Rahner has made part of his turnaround program is workers' comp reform. Now, um, if you're not uh, an employer, this is a bit of an esoteric issue. Uh, and so it's been difficult to translate for uh, the electorate, I think. Um, but it turns out to be a real cost savings, a real way to not, w- without jeopardizing worker safety or compensating those workers who are hurt on the job, to reduce the cost of doing business in Illinois. Absolutely. You walk onto any manufacturing floor in Illinois and you talk to management and they're trying to make this work and, you know, stop the jobs from fleeing to Indiana or out of the country. And they say, we need workers comp reform. We need relief. We want to hire more people. We want to spend this money by giving out more jobs, not necessarily playing these overinflated costs that the Illinois state government has forced upon us. And they're crying out for relief and they have been for some years and we're just not seeing the change out of Springfield that they deserve. And it's one of these things where relief uh, lowering the cost of people doing business uh, would be a better way to go, perhaps, than subsidizing people to locate their jobs here. I mean, all you're doing is essentially conceding that the cost of do business, uh, doing business in Illinois is too high. So we're going to give you money to come here to, to, to locate your business, to grow jobs. Um, but we would achieve the same thing without transferring money from somebody's pocket to somebody else's pocket if we just reduce the cost. Absolutely. And instead of giving out crony deals that benefit a few companies who happen to have a good lobbyist and good connections, you could treat everyone fairly and make Illinois just a more generally well-liked place to do business. The fairness argument. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Zach Model, he's the chief alignment officer of Atlas Tool and Dye Works in Lyons. There in uh, West Central Cook County, and he uh, he knows what it's like to deal with the workers' comp system in Illinois because he runs a manufacturing company. And uh, Zach joins us now. Zach, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me, Dan. Great to be here. So, um, just kind of explain your from your first person account uh, what the impact of the current workers' comp regime is in Illinois, and perhaps in comparison to other states to the extent uh, that you can compare and contrast, and uh, what some kind of reform that a- again protected workers genuinely hurt on the job so that they're made whole, um, but also made it a little bit more competitive to be here in Illinois, particularly as a manufacturer. Absolutely. Well, you know, from my perspective as a manufacturer, the system, it's not working here for anyone in Illinois. It's a system that's designed to protect injured workers and employers in a no-fault system and, and really get injured workers treated properly and back to work quickly. But what we have in Illinois, in, especially in a cost-effective manner, however, in Illinois what we've got is a system that has higher costs than, than surrounding states and much slower outcomes. So it's not working for anyone. We're not getting injured workers back on the job quickly, and we're doing what we are doing costs a lot more than it does in any other state around us. And so as a manufacturer, you know, we have to compete both locally, nationally, and and globally. And when we have costs uh, that are three times higher than what our competitors in other states are paying for workers' compensation, it really uh, is a drag on on our ability to grow and export more product from Illinois. Yeah, you mentioned three times higher. I have a steel manufacturer near where I live. And he's looked at the the costs in Indiana. And if he moved his company across the state line, he could cut his costs by two thirds. It's really quite incredible. Why is it that Illinois is so much higher? I mean, surely the money is going somewhere. Where is it going and why do we have such higher costs compared to everyone else? Well, I think that's a great question. You know, there's been a lot of finger pointing around the issue as to who's making all this money off of it. But I'll tell you, I've talked to companies that self-insure, and uh, that means that they they don't have an insurance company. They pool their money and and save it, and when they have a claim, they pay it themselves. And some of these companies operate in multi-states. And what I've heard from these folks is that, you know, Illinois, uh, our claims cost more. The, the, The system goes longer. You can't get an injured worker back to work. It requires more treatment to get the same exact outcome as what happens 
in other states. So I think we have kind of a, a perverse system that's been set up here in Illinois that is incentivizing the wrong kind of thing. It's incentivizing care that goes on longer and longer, and it's not incentivizing get the, getting the worker back to work quickly. Um, you know, and, and to me, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of players involved in the system here, but I think we really need to address uh, it's uh, People are loath to talk about it, but the causation standard. I don't blame my, my injured workers for, for following the system through because that's what it's set up to do. We have a system that is, is set up the wrong way, and we need to really look at the causation. Because right now, uh, an injury that happens at home and the employee comes to work, if the workplace is 1% responsible, does anything to aggravate that injury, it's a workers' comp claim. That, that's not the right way to have it here in Illinois. Yeah, that's the uh, one of the issues is kind of the gaming of the system. And I, I, and I would suggest not just the cost of it, but it probably doesn't do... Uh, too much to advance employee morale if you see your colleagues gaming the system and uh, you know being uh, compensated not to work uh, effectively. And it, we've heard stories, so it would be interesting your personal experience, not just about kind of the I played basketball on the weekend and I got hurt and then I went to work and I got hurt a little bit more or I just claimed that what happened playing basketball over the weekend actually happened on the job and then you're embroiled in this uh, back and forth in the workers comp system or even going so far as you know people uh injuring themselves while they're under the influence of uh, illicit substances or legal substances but they shouldn't be under them at work i, I mean it, that's kind of how wild and wacky the workers comp system is in illinois uh, you know, and it goes beyond that. We, we in manufacturing, we're certainly dealing with an aging workforce. You've heard about the skills gap and the shortage of manufacturing workers and skilled workers. So we have workers that are working longer and getting older and staying on the job longer. And I am seeing things that are absolutely related to the aging process being claimed as workers' comp because you come to work and your shoulder hurts you. It's a, it's a part of the aging process, and and but your job aggravates it and it goes into a workers' comp mm-hmm. claim. And these soft tissue claims, they just go on and on and on. They're very nebulous. So. So it, it's everything you talked about. Plus, you know, our system has such a loose standard in Illinois. The workers aren't wrong. They're not gaming. They, they are following the law. But our law is set up so poorly in Illinois, it has absolutely no no restriction for, for what should be for a health insurance claim versus a worker's I, I claim. guess a better way to put it is the politicians gaming the system. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Somebody's winning off of it, Dan. But it's certainly not the employers, and it's certainly not the employees, the injured worker, either. They're definitely not benefiting. They're hey. And, of course, this is not only a manufacturing issue, right? Uh, The state government, local government, also pays work comp on its employees. And so you have taxpayers paying for these inflated work comp claims, the insurance costs. So it does directly hit everybody in this state in some form or fashion. But speaking of the laws down in Springfield, you know, work comp has finally gotten to a point where people say, okay, on the left and right, we need to do something, right? But the the deal that was trying to be offered out of uh, Springfield this spring was, okay, we'll give you a little bit of work comp reform in exchange for a massive tax increase on uh, businesses in Illinois. Right. From, from your right. perspective, Zach, does that sound like a good deal? A little bit of work comp reform in exchange for a massive tax hike? If they said a massive workers' comp reform for a little tax hike, you might have my attention. <laughs> but I deal. think they've got the cart in front of the horse here. But I will say this, that for manufacturers, and, and again, you, you touch on the government, you know, police, fire department, all of these people are paying workers' comp. For me, in manufacturing, if we could get significant workers' comp reform where we really saw our rates come down, maybe not a third, but a half, I would be saving six figures a year. And, and I'm a small business. And I think business, and that six figures is not going to go in my pocket. I'm going to buy another machine. I'm going to buy another employer. My company is growing right now, and so are a lot of other manufacturers. We are growing. We have opportunity, and we will create the jobs and the growth. But we need an environment that supports us. And when I can move 15 minutes over the border and, and, and realize these savings that can help me grow my company, I would be foolish not, not to do that. So we really need the people in Illinois. It's not a D issue. It's not an R issue. It's a state of Illinois issue. We need to move beyond the politics and focus on the solutions that are going to bring us the jobs and the growth that we need. And for manufacturers, you know, I mean, this is isn't just idle chatter or a uh, an unserious threat. I mean, I assume you find uh, f- colleagues in your sector that are moving 15 minutes across some one of our Illinois borders to another state to reduce their cost of doing business and taking the jobs with them. 
all the time. And, you know, it, it, it's not that hard to do. I don't want to do it. This is not my desire. I like being here. I love Illinois. I think it's a great state. But, you know, between property taxes and then uh, workers' comp, there's there's some things that cost me six figures uh, in a variety of areas to stay in Illinois. And, again, as a small business owner, you scratch your head and kind of say, is that making sense? And when times are tight, you know, uh, boy, a little cushion would go a long way. So I, I just think I hope that, that politicians in Illinois will, will move beyond the politics and really get some solutions done and not just window dressing here. We need to really, uh, in, in workers' compensation, get at the causation, get at some of the costs. And there are a lot of good proposals out there. People know what the answers are. We just have to move beyond the politics. Well, uh, a boy can dream. Uh, Zach <laughs> Model, uh, Chief Alignment Officer of Atlas Tool and Dye Works in Scenic Lines, Illinois. Zach, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Pleasure to be here. Thank you.